Awesome. So it looks like it's 6.10. I'm excited to get things started. Um, before we do, I'd love to introduce myself. Um, so you guys know who I am and who's going to be talking to you today. Um, unfortunately, I can't see you guys on video for this presentation, but I know we have a little chat. So as I, as I go through some of these points, share in the chat if any of these are the same as yours. If you're also born in Toronto, also raised in Hamilton, also into rock climbing, um, let me know. I want to be able to interact a little bit with you guys, even though I can't see you today. Um, so I'm Jason. I'm a Waterloo and Laurier uh, student born in Toronto a long, long time ago, um, but raised in Hamilton and living now in Waterloo. I just moved back on May 1st. So I'm living in a Res 1 building. If you're nearby, maybe we can meet up for bubble tea, socially distanced, of course. Um, I got my start in hardware and that eventually led me into programming and now into business and strategy work as well. Uh, my hobbies and my free time, I love to work on 3D printing. I built my own 3D printer in high school, as well as uh, rock climbing back when my rock climbing place used to be open. That's a sad face there for that. Um, this year I was uh, TO Hacks Technology and Operations Director and previously our Participant Experience Director. And I had the pleasure of building our Discord bot. It started as a little bit of a side project last year just for fun so we could collect some stats. Um, now it's grown to over 2,000 lines, I think easily above that. Um, and I'm sure all of you have interacted with it. If, you, if you're here, you probably verified on Discord. So you've used the bot at least once. Um, it's got plenty of cool features and I'll talk a little bit about some of them today and happy to answer more about how I built some of that in Q&A as well. See, Ethan does rock climbing. That's awesome, Ethan. Um, do you go to Grand River Rocks in Waterloo or are you um, completely out of the like GTA area? Saga, okay, cool. Um, Hacker Pack is at live.tohacks.ca. I highly recommend you go to these slides. I'm going to be copy and pasting code snippets from them. Um, it'll go a lot faster if you can copy and paste them as well. Yes, thank you to our Tohacks rep that dropped that in the chat. So let's dive in. What is Discord? You guys have all been using Discord for the event, so you probably know a little bit about it. Some of you might be new to the platform. We try to send an introduction tutorial to get you guys started. Um, but Discord is a free voice, video, and text chat app that's used by tens of millions of people to talk and hang out with their communities and friends. It's a really powerful tool for building communities, There's all sorts of things. It started with gamers, but you can see Discord communities for career advice, for hobbies like rock climbing and 3D printing, and for our TO Hacks Hackathon. Um, as the quote describes, it's already familiar to millions of people and it's growing really quickly. I think they were recently looking at an acquisition. So it's a, it's a big and popular company. As well, it goes beyond just text messages. Slack tends to be just text. Um, Discord is text, voice, video, emojis, embeds. There's all sorts of custom content you can do. We'll talk a little, about, little bit about different um, channel types as well. So there's, Discord's very fully featured in that way. It's also open to bots and automation. A lot of platforms try to shut down bots or keep out things that automate that. Um, Discord is open and built well to support bots. And that's why it's a great platform to build on, especially for building communities at scale. So hopefully you're wondering now, how can I build some of these cool bots for TOX, for uh, Discord, even just for fun? Um, and hopefully, how can you use Discord to win TOX? I make no promises, but I'm gonna give you a bit of a foundation in building Discord bots. So you can hopefully use it as a part of your hack and hopefully have a great time with it, learn a lot, and maybe it'll help you place. So this is what we're up to today. This is our little workshop schedule. It's a screenshot right off of Notion. Uh, we're going to work on understanding the platform in depth. The first thing we need to know about Discord is actually understand everything about Discord to be able to build a bot around it. We're going to get you set up with the basics you need to be able to build your own Discord bot, understand some best practices, and build our own basic bot, including a few, including a few common examples and use cases you might run into. We'll also connect with an external API. The last thing we'll add is a pulling little dog photos and dog quotes. So if, you're, if you love corgis as much as us, you might randomly have a corgi photo in there as well. Um, we're going to share a detailed list of resources close to the end and answer your question. So I know there's a Q&A box uh, towards the end. I already see one question has been answered in here. Um, but please drop your questions in there throughout. I'll keep an eye on that. And as well, if you're having any trouble in the workshop, drop that in the chat so other people can help you as well. And we can work on this together. Um, and hopefully, we'll all have fun. So there's a little goal statement at the bottom. We want to give you a solid foundation and clear next steps for leveraging Discord's API to build your own bots for the platform so that you can address some of our TO Hacks challenge statements. So let's chat a little bit about what Discord looks like. Um, here's a busy screenshot, and I want to walk through a little bit of some of the things you can see here. This is right off our TO Hacks server, the introductions channel. Um, Vincent just introduced himself here. I think this is from yesterday. Uh, but there's a lot going on here that we can all interact with the bot and it, start, it helps to look at the, the perspective you have and understand what's going on here. 
Um, in the top left, we have a little icon that takes you to your home. You can uh, send DMs there, including group direct messages. Um, there's a distinction with that in, when you're interacting as a bot. Um, as well, we're on our TOHack server. Um, the words server versus guild, they both mean the same thing. Um, a guild is a technical term because it's not really a server, um, but a server is a commenter. You heard of a Discord server, it's the same as a Discord guild. But when we're programming and when we're going through the workshop, I'm going to call it a guild since that's the technical term for it. We have some channels here. We see a few different types. We have text channels. There's a general voice channel. Um, you can see we have some private ones down there for sponsors as well um, that most of you guys probably won't have access to. We have an announcements channel up at the top. Um, there's a welcome and rules channel, which has been specially indicated. And there's something called a stage channel as well. We don't have any of those on our platform, but it's a really new feature similar to Clubhouse within Discord, if you're familiar with the Clubhouse platform. This Discord also shows us a few different roles. We can see on the right-hand side, different people are colored differently. So we have TOHacks execs, but uh, under some are Discord mods, they're colored orange. Some are green for just execs. Below that, we have some participants, which are in blue. We'll have later during our hackathon weekend, we'll have sponsors, judges, and mentors, which each have their own roles, own permissions, and own colors. There's also a distinction between a Discord member and a Discord user. A Discord user is anyone with a Discord account. You can go sign up, you likely have one. When you join a guild, you become a member. You get some more entities around it. Vincent, for example, his username likely isn't Vincent-participant, but because he's part of a server, he gets a unique nickname on the server, as well as the ability to roll, send messages, and interact otherwise with the server. Those are uh, activities and permissions that are tied to his member. Uh, his user, on the other hand, can send DMs and join servers, but the permissions necessary to do things within a server are attached to a member. We also see embeds. We have a couple of these uh, little photos here from the introduction graphics that are custom generated. We see they have links, they have tags, they have a little user icon in the top corner. We see Vincent's name there, uh, as well as the graphic itself and a colored bar on the side. So this is an example of some of the rich content you can uh, use and interact with and your bot can create within Discord. Pause here for a second if there's any questions and I'm gonna dive into a slide next that kind of walks through some of the common relationships in Discord. I don't see any open questions for now. I saw someone was excited about corgis. That's awesome. Um, it does, it generates any sort of dog. So we'll see, it, it randomly picks dog photos. So we'll see if you happen to get a corgi photo. Um, maybe you can screenshot it and send it to me. It'll make my day. So we have a, just our Discord relationships graph here. A little bit of this I spoke about before, and this is a very small fraction of all the different entities you can interact with as a bot. Um, we have our guild at the top. You join it with an invite URL and invite itself has some properties associated with it. Uh, there's different roles for different members. A member is one type of a user. Um, a member can have a voice state. They can join or leave a voice channel, for example. A guild also has channels which have messages. Each message can have various attachments or reactions associated with it. When you put a little emoji on it, that's a reaction. Um, and members can then leave those reactions. They can send those messages. They can add attachments. And like I said, a user is a member is a type of user within a guild. We also have direct message channels, which users can interact with, um, but because they're not within the guild, they're not a member. Um, and we have our client. Our client is the actual user that our bot is going to have. It's a special type of user. It can join a guild just like any other user. It can send DMs just like any other user, um, and it can interact similarly. Why is user looping back to itself? That's a great question. Users can also message and interact with other users. So there's a relationship there as well. Um, I forgot why I added that specifically, but there's, there's a connection that a user can interact back on itself in a few different ways, um, including messaging other users and uh, connecting with other users. Okay, so how does our bot interact with Discord? So like I said, a bot is a special type of user. You can invite bots to guilds. You can also DM with them. Um, a bot can work in two ways. So very recently, they've added support for something called bot commands. That's not something we're going to speak very much to here, um, but it, it can help simplify your code if you're doing a lot of messages back and forth and sending a lot of commands to trigger things. Bots are generally event-based. When X happens, do Y. Um, so when a message is sent, you can respond to it. When someone joins a voice channel or someone joins your guild, you can act on that in a specific way. There's two main and most popular libraries for Discord bots. There's discord.js. It's Node.js based. It's fully featured. You can interact with anything you can think on Discord. 
Um, and it handles caching and rate limiting externally. So that's more the responsibility of the programmer. If those are terms you're familiar with, it just means that it's gonna be a bit more complicated to work with it. But if you're familiar with Node.js, it might be worth trying it. It's also what all of our TOHAX bots are built in. So we keep it all in the same language for uh, intercompatibility. And so we can learn from each other. So the bot you've interacted with so far was built in discord.js. There's also a Python library, discord.py. It's again, fully featured, but it handles caching and rate limiting internally, which means you don't have to worry about some of these things. If you're not familiar with how to handle and interact and fetch from a cache, you won't have to worry about it with discord.py. Realistically, if you're building something simple, you should probably just go with whatever language you're most familiar with. But as your bot starts to become more complicated into hundreds or thousands of lines, you want to pick something that has the features that's going to be best for you and a language around it that allows you to interact with Discord in the way that's easiest for you. OK, so I've done a lot of talking, um, but it's almost time now to actually dive in and get things set up. So I'm going to see if I'll be able to share both my ID and the slide deck, and I'll help you follow along in an IDE, an integrated development environment. So let me share this as well as VS Code. Excellent. So it shows me that both of those are shared. I believe on Zoom, you guys should be able to see both now. Um, and if you're someone who uses VS Code, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing. If not, I'm just going to assume you're familiar with opening up a terminal window, editing files, um, and running, for example, Python scripts. Uh, before I dive into this, I will say if you're not at all familiar with Python, I would say don't worry about the ID stuff. Don't worry about that. Just sit back, relax, enjoy, and watch the uh, workshop and pay attention to the upcoming workshop from Joshua, who will give you an introduction to Python and help you understand some of these things. Then you can go back to the slide deck, back to the recording, um, and watch it again once you have a better understanding of Python. Um, generally speaking, this workshop is going to assume you have a basic understanding of Python um, and at least a little bit of experience in it. If that's not the case, it's totally okay. And the next workshop is going to help you learn and build the skills you'll need for that. Um, so for now, just sit back if that's you. Awesome. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is git clone our repo. So this is a little repository I've made. There's not very many files in here. We're going to build most of it ourselves. Um, but let's clone that. So clone, copied, 11 objects, perfect. Um, and then I'm going to change my directory to wherever that is. So I basically just downloaded everything off GitHub and changed to that folder. Um, at the same time, I'm going to open that folder in my IDE so we can start to interact with it a bit better. Let me see if I can zoom in VS Code a little bit so you guys can see. Thank you, uh, Nuren, who DM'd me from TOHAX. Let me know about that. Hopefully, that's a little bit more visible. Let me know if you'd like me to zoom in a bit more, and I'm happy to. Um, like I said as well, most of what I'm doing will be on the slides. So um, you can find that in the Hacker Pack. Take a copy of the slides and follow along with us as well. Nuren says it looks good. Lovely. Um, so the next thing we want to do is just create a virtual environment. Um, again, I won't dive into what that means. I'll leave that to Joshua and to your own research, but it's just a little area for us to keep our, our files and our work together. Um, so we created that. Then we're going to gonna activate it. Perfect. Um, so there's different commands if you're on Windows or Linux there. So make sure you're doing the one that works for you. And then installer dependencies. I'll let that go for a sec. Um, See why it doesn't like this. Ah, yes. Um, pip install, there's a tack R I'm missing there. There we go. I'm um, so just going to go ahead and install some of the dependencies we need. Um, so there's a dash R you can add in there, and it should work for you as well. OK. Um, how, where do I get access to the slides? I'm on the hacker pack. I believe someone just answered that. Thank you. Um, yep, it should be under the workshop. You should be able to get the slides there. Awesome. Um, and raise your hand as well once you're 
If you're following along with us um, and you're at the successfully installed stage, uh, raise your hand so I can see that as well, so I can keep an eye. Um, so I see one person, perfect. Yeah, so I've successfully installed a bunch of different things that'll help us out today. Got a couple different people who have their hands raised, that's perfect. Um, I'll give it another moment, but this can, this can sort of run in the background to install as we walk through things. Um, and like I said as well, feel free to just sit back and uh, listen and take a look at this as we go through if, it's, um, if that's your preference as well. So I'll move ahead to the next slide for now. Um, like I said, make sure to have the slides up and follow along. Um, it might take it a little bit longer to download or install for you. So no worries if that's the case. Um, next thing we want to do is get our bot set up. So we can do that by clicking this link that comes to our developer portal. Um, you might need to sign into Discord first. Um, all of you should have a Discord account if you're participating in our event. So that shouldn't be any trouble at all. Um, you see we have our TOHacks bot here. I'm not going to go into that and show you our tokens or anything, um, but that's the one you've interacted with in the past. So we'll go ahead and create a new one. Um, you can name it whatever you want. I think I'm going to name mine something like Discord Bot Workshop. Um, again, feel free to name it whatever you like. Excellent. So we've created that. We're going to go into Bot, Add Bot, because so far it's just an app. We need to make sure we know it's a bot. Um, so every little bot has a name, Discord Bot Workshop. Um, it has a bunch of different settings here and permissions we can set up. Excellent. Um, and the next thing we want to do is copy our token. So we saw over here, we have a token. Um, I'm going to uh, regenerate this token at the end of the workshop. So if you want to, you want to steal my bot token, you'll have to do it really quickly. Um, but that's our token. So we'll put that into settings.py for now. Um, we won't need it immediately, but you can copy and paste it somewhere else. This is where it'll end up going um, for the time being. So we have our token. I think we're all set now. Keep an eye on Q&A in the chat as well. If anyone has any trouble or any questions, let me know. OK. Um, and the next thing we want to do is actually have a guild to test with. Um, so we have our TO Hacks guild here. This is, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this. We're going to go down and create another one. Um, as you can see, Discord is great for building communities. I'm a part of many. Um, and I have some unanswered messages from participants I should take a look at after this. Um, but we're going to go ahead and create our own guild. It can be for you and your friends. We can call it whatever you want again, Discord Bot Workshop Guild. Um, that name as well. We'll put the name in here for your guild name. Um, that's not necessary for most of what the bot's going to do, but it's helpful for some of the things we'll be doing soon. So I'll keep it there for us. OK, we can go ahead and create that guild. Excellent. So now you have your own little TO, you have your own Discord server. You can invite your friends, personalize with an icon. There's plenty of things you can do here. I have the Discord app downloaded. You can do that as well. Um, and right now, the only person online in my guild is myself. Soon we'll add our bot online as well. Um, so let me know if anyone has any trouble with that. Um, and let me know in the chat as well if I should slow down, if I'm moving too fast with anything, or if you're having any issues. At any point, um, just let me know. Just communicate in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on those as well. Uh, but we have our little, our little guild. We have our text channel and voice channel they've set up for us. And now we need to add our bot to that. So if we go back to our developer portal, we can go to OAuth2. Um, this is a bot. So first, we have to check off bot. And then below that, we have a list of bot permissions. So this kind of starts to give you a sense of all the things your bot can do. Um, there's plenty of things you can do without needing permissions, but this will help it do admin things within your server, um, use external emojis, attach files. There's plenty of things we can do. Uh, for the sake of this workshop, I'm going to make it an administrator, which essentially allows it to do everything. If you're building a bot that's going to be used beyond this workshop, that is very much not recommended. Um, check off the specific things you're going to need. You'll get an error message if you don't have something you need. Um, I'm making an administrator for the time being, just so I don't have to worry about specific things. But like I said, in a production server, you want to make sure it's it only has the roles you need specifically. Otherwise, this bot can access everything. So I'm going to go ahead, copy this link, go into a new tab, and paste it there. And boot up. It says, OK, do you want to connect this to a server? So I do. I will connect it to Discord Bot Workshop Guild. 
click continue. I'm, I'm not sure I want to give an administrative privilege for the time being I do. I can still make sure I'm a human. Pretty sure I am. Okay, authorize, all set up. Um, and if we go back here, we can see welcome Discord bot workshop. So our bot has now joined. You can see the bot is in the guild, but it's offline now. Um, as soon as we start running some scripts, it'll come back online. Excellent. So I believe at this point we should be all set up and we can start with our first hello world example. Um, if anyone's still getting set up, like I said, if you need me to slow down, let me know, happy to do so, but I'm going to dive right into our first example in the meantime. So back in our ID, we have our bot.py. I'm going to close my terminal for now. Actually, I'll leave it open just at the bottom. Um, so we have a, just to start here, we import our settings file um, and we import the Discord library. We also start up our client um, and we run our client at the bottom using the token we put here earlier. So make sure your token's there, otherwise you'll get an error message invalid token. Um, but now we can, we can get ourselves started. So the code snippet we want to add um, is looking for a client event. So it's looking for when someone sends a message. So it's called, of course, on message. And with that, we get whatever message they sent. So again, this code snippet's in the slide. Feel free to copy and paste it. I'm going to type it out and sort of talk through what it does. Um, so the first thing we check is whether the message author is the client. So we don't want to act on messages that the bot itself sends. So this is one way to check that it's not your bot that's sending messages. Then we're going to check if it starts with if a message someone sends starts with ping, okay? Um, and then we're gonna send back message.channel.send pong. So ping pong. Awesome. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead back in my terminal. I can run python bot.py. Oh, I need a colon there. Okay, we have logged in. Um, now back in our Discord server, if we go back, we can see our Discord uh, bot is online now. If I send a message and I write ping, name message is not defined. Let me take a look at my code snippet and see what's going on. Three S's. Oh, thank you. Ethan's got his eyes on the ball. You're right. Three S's is more S's than is in message. Okay, let's give that another shot. Um, you'll learn in software development, sometimes it's uh, a simple typo is going to mess up a lot for you sometimes. Thank you, Ethan, for catching that for me. Um, there we go. Ping pong. So that's our little hello world example. The bot can respond to a message uh, when you send it. Does the Discord bot store code? Um, I'm not totally sure what you mean by that, Eric. Um, the bot itself is a user who acts on Discord and we can program what it does using Python code. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't, feel free to ask another question and clarify, um, but it doesn't itself store code. We use code to control what the bot does. Okay. Hopefully that's our hello world example. We're good on time. So if anyone has any other questions or concerns, um, happy to hop in and answer those now. Running to an error, importing the requirements. Okay, um, what's the error saying? Error could not find a version that satisfies the requirements. Okay, um, I'm gonna suggest instead then that you just install things directly and see what it does. So you can do pip install attack you discord, which will um, just install and update discord. Um, and that should allow you to do it without needing that uh, pip command for now. Um, you may later have to install a few other things as we go through. It might give you a missing module error and we'll um, happy to address those as we go along. But if you're having any issues um, installing with the requirements.txt file, we have, yeah, I guess the package resources um, is tripping some people up. So feel free to just use that command instead, which will just directly install Discord for you. 
Okay. Um, so ping pong, our, our hello world example is done and we can uh, see a few uh, use cases. Um, I'm probably not gonna write this all out. I'll see if I can, I'll just copy and paste it off my slides as well. Um, but yeah, so I can take this one as well. Um, and back in our IDE, we'll add that code snippet um, below the one we had with the on message. So I'll run that bot again and we'll see how this works. Um, so I earlier sent the ping message. If I go ahead and edit that and add another G. Let's try a new message and see how it goes. So ping pong works still. Type error, missing one argument after, after. Um, so this is code snippets from somewhere else from a different one. We're going to do it without the self. Um, since we're not writing it as a client, we're writing it uh, just directly in line. There we go. So we get this little thing. Um, I've edited my message. Um, so this is a bit of an example of maybe a moderation thing. If you're afraid of someone writing some spam, writing something um, inappropriate on your server and changing it, this can call you out if that happens. Um, I believe it also is a call out if I delete my message. Yeah, so I deleted my message. So maybe I'm trying to hide something, doing something uh, wrong on your server. So this would be one way to catch someone that's doing that. Um, our server does the same thing. You guys just can't see it. If you're deleting or editing messages that are harmful or harassment or otherwise, um, not good things on our server, we have logs that keep track of all of that as well. Um, so make sure you're being respectful and being appropriate when you're participating in our events. Um, so yeah, that's our next example. I saw something here from anonymous attendee. Since it's the code that tells the bot what to do, then could we potentially get the bot to analyze images as well? Um, could the bot ban users posting pictures in a non-picture channel? Um, absolutely. Um, so there's one example I found online that banned users that posted links. Um, you can definitely, here, I'll answer this live as well. Um, you can definitely do something that bans users posting images in a non-image channel. Um, you spoke a little bit about analyzing images. Um, the bot itself obviously doesn't have any built-in image analyze, analyzing software, nothing like OpenCV to understand or process images. Um, but if you want to build something like that in Python or Node.js, it would be super easy to connect with the bot. You could send that, um, build out some code that takes an image and responds whether or not it's something you want shared. Um, and then you can send, you can have the bot communicate with whatever you've built that way. Um, so yeah, this is absolutely something you could do. You could ban someone from posting um, pictures, links, embeds, other sorts of content in channels that aren't meant for it. Um, that's absolutely something we could do. If we have some time, I'll try and build a custom example around that for you at the end. Um, maybe I can give you a code snippet to get you started there. Excellent. So that was one of our common use cases. Um, I'll jump to the next one if there aren't any other questions. Um, this one, I'm definitely going to copy and paste. This one's much longer. Um, and I believe for this, we also need to import um, async IO, which should be installed with Discord. If it's not, we're going to find out and fix that. Um, so we had this on message thing. I'll add this snippet. Um, I'll make another on message area and add the snippet there because this is another one that um, keeps track of which messages are sent and acts on that. Excellent, let me close this so we can see more at once. Okay, so I'll kind of walk through what this does a little bit. So when a message is sent that starts with guess, it sends this back um, and it waits until someone responds with a guess that's from the same author and contains a number. Um, if it takes too long and it times out, it'll send a message about that as well. Um, but if the, if the guess matches what we generated randomly, 
um, then it's going to send back you are right. If it's not, then it's going to send back, oops, it was actually what the actual answer was. So this is a little guessing game you can play, but it demonstrates how to wait for answers from um, someone you're interacting with, and it demonstrates how you can respond like that. What does it mean if cannot connect to Discord and certificate verify failed? I have not seen that, but let's see what the internet says. Python SSL. Hmm. Yeah, I cannot connect host to discordapp.com. Certificate verified failed. Um, hmm. um, so this seems to be an issue with a particular version of Python on Mac. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to type back as my answer, um, the GitHub issue that came up for this. Um, you can dig in a bit more there and Google similar terms and see what you come up with, but it seems from the first few responses that it might have to do with the specific Python version you're using. Um, Someone else posted a fix. I should share this tab as well. Someone else posted a fix um, in 2017 here, this link. Um, try that if you're still having issues, I'll, I'll touch on it at the end of the workshop and see if I can help you personally. Um, but it looks like it's just a particular Python version issue um, with the way it's connecting to the API. Awesome, so let's see if I can get this to work. I think I also need to import random for the number. Indentation error. Yes, it's absolutely right. This needs to be indented. Okay, we've logged back in. Um, let's see what our server does. So if I go to guess, guess a number between one and 10, self is not defined. Um, yeah, so this might be, I think this is a, a client based example. So then this should be client dot wait for. There we go. Let's give this another shot. Um, so sometimes you'll see code snippets and examples as well that come where the client is written as a specific class. So sometimes you have to switch out self for client or remove self if it's a argument in a function as well. Um, so there's different ways to format your code around um, how you want to interact with the client, how you want to structure your code. Um, so this is this code example is taken from one that's structured a little differently. Okay, guess a number between one and ten. Um, any guesses in the chat? Oh, it took too long. Okay, so we said seven. Let's try seven again uh, for the next one. Guess seven. Oh, it was actually eight. Okay. Um, yeah, two people said seven. I hope that's chance. I think this is doing something crazy and not timing out. Um, so close, that is pretty close. Um, so I'm gonna remove this code snippet for now. I'm gonna comment it out. Um, but that's an example of a little way you can kind of play back and forth with someone as well, another um, short example. So I think we have one more quick example we're gonna do. Um, yeah, this one should be, this one, yeah, this one will work a bit better and come a bit quicker. Um, so I'm going to add this in our on ready. Um, this was the snippet for which we needed um, settings.guild. We need to populate settings here. Um, otherwise, it doesn't necessarily need to know the guild name. Um, this also demonstrates something that's interesting in the Python version of this library. It has a lot of utility functions. Discord.get, for example, goes through all the guilds um, and finds, goes through any, any list of things and finds something that matches a specific name. Um, so this is this. Uh, Discord.py library comes with a lot of utility functions you can use and make your code a lot easier, a lot nicer to write. Um, this might have to be a long for loop otherwise. So this kind of helps you keep things short. Um, Discord.js has a lot less of these because ES5 JavaScript has um, more of these built in. So this is one way you can clean up your code a little bit with some of these utility functions. Excellent. So it connected to the guild. It actually listed the name of the guild for me now and it listed its member. So there's this Discord bot workshop, which is obviously our bot itself as a member. Um, I'm gonna be email the slide deck after this. You can find the slide deck in the hacker pack um, that I think there's an answered question that will help you find that if you have any trouble finding in the hacker pack, 
Um, please let us know. One of our TOX team members will help you find it. Um, there's a link to the slide deck there. I can see a bunch of you guys are on here, so I know it's the correct link that's up there. Um, I'm not planning on taking the slide deck down, so feel free to save it and use it through the hackathon. Um, that's something that can help get you started. Awesome. Um, so let's see some quotes we can share. I'm actually going to skip this one example um, just for the sake of time. I want to get right to our dog pics, and I want to give you time. You can give you guys time to ask questions at the end. Um, if you have, uh, if we don't end up having questions, I might come back to the example for the sake of time. Um, I want you guys to see the dogs. So for this, I believe we need to import requests. Um, it might have been Eric or Ethan who had previously had issues with. Um, PIP installing, if that was you, um, I think we'll also have to install requests now. So I should already have it installed uh, from earlier requirement already satisfied. If you weren't able to run that command to install the requirements.txt, you'll have to run this now to make sure you have the right package. Awesome, so let's get this code snippet. Um, I'm actually gonna, I'll reuse what I have here and I'm just gonna comment out um, stuff after guests. So instead of guests, we'll try something like doggo. I like that. Gotta love doggos. I miss my dog. He's back home in Hamilton. Um, I haven't seen him for a couple of days and I've moved back. So this is pulling from two APIs. So these are uh, some random APIs, a fun site. It has a bunch of cool APIs you can play around and test with. It's great for demos like this one. They're free. You can just um, make a request to this link and it'll give you a photo of a dog and a fact of a dog. Um, so we're going to try that out now. Let's go ahead and run our bot again. No module named request. Ah, pip install request is what I need then, not requests. Hmm. Well, maybe I'm just typing this wrong request. Let's try that again. Does Python work the same as Python 3? Um, Again, Joshua will probably touch on this better than I can. Um, it probably depends what version you have installed on your system. Um, I believe if you only have Python 3 installed, Python will work. Um, in this case, I can run Python because I set up a virtual environment using Python 3. Um, but I think on like on my, uh, I'm running this on a server as well. On my native machine, for example, I have both Python and Python 3. So depending on the command, it just runs a different version of Python. I think like 2.7 or 3.7. Um, depending on whether or not I add the three to it. Um, again, definitely a question for Joshua. He'll be able to explain this a lot better than I can, and he might have content prepared on it as well. Um, stick around for the next workshop after this. Um, he'll be an amazing person to ask about that. Okay. So let's try Doggo and see if this works for us. I mean, JSON is not defined, so that's another one I need to import. I really want some doggo picks. There we go. Um, so this is a photo. We see it's a fun fact. Um, as per the Guinness Book of World Records, the world's smallest dog, a Yorkshire ter Terrier from Great Britain, weighed a teeny tiny four ounces. Um, I'm really bad with imperial units, but I, that sounds like very little at age two. So two years old and only four ounces. That's a very tiny dog. Um, that was fun. I want to try this again. Okay, a person who hunts a beagle is known as a beagler. Whoa, okay, cool. And an unrelated dog photo. Um, if you're building this, let me know if you get any corgi photos, please send them my way. Um, but this is an excellent example of how you can use um, more rich content as opposed to just a message. You can send an embed. So we have an embed where we can set images, we can set footers, um, and we can set the title and the color. So you can change the color here as well. Um, and also an example of how you can access another API. So in all likelihood, if you want to use Discord, you're probably not going to do it with just Discord. Our platform uses, our Discord bot for the event uses several different APIs, um, especially relying a lot on Airtable, our database we use, um, as well as a Firebase database and plenty of other things it connects with. Um, so this is a quick way you can make an API call to something. You can check the weather, check traffic. Um, who knows? I believe we also had an intro to API workshop earlier today. So I'm sure you have plenty of ideas brewing in your mind from that. And this is a great way to leverage some of those to make API requests and bring them right into Discord and display them as very rich content, um, as we can see here. So if I'm not mistaken, that's our last example. And I'll bring these slides back up for you guys um, and move into Q&A.
Excellent. So this is a slide with a lot of information on it, but it's just a bunch of resources and next steps for you guys. If you are interested in pursuing a Discord bot uh, for this hackathon or any other time in the future, um, these are some great places to get yourself started. Um, how would you keep your bot running without having to run your program? That is one of the next steps. You can host it on something like Python anywhere. Um, if you're doing it in Python, I believe um, Repolit also will be able to host it. You can search um, in general, I'll type an answer for this, but you can search Google for like um, Python hosting, um, Python hosting and probably put Python hosting free because chances are you don't need a paid version uh, for most of your purposes, unless a lot of people are using your Discord bot. Um, Ours is uh, a Node.js bot, so we run it on Heroku. Um, you unfortunately can't use a free tier because it's not a web app with that on Heroku. I can explain that a bit more if people are curious of doing this in Node.js, um, but you just find a service that can host Python uh, for you. If you're doing a hackathon demo, it might be okay just to run it on your own computer. You probably don't need to bring it somewhere to host it, um, but if you actually do want to put this on a Discord server for any amount of a long term, um, definitely host it somewhere like that. Um, would this work with REPL? Um, pretty sure. I don't see a reason why it shouldn't. Um, I haven't tried it myself personally. If you do try it and you run into any issues, please let me know. Um, but it it could likely work. Um, I believe REPL will like host Python scripts for us. Yeah, so you can you can run things online. Um, yeah, actually, that's a good question. Um, I it should work. Um, I don't see a reason why it won't. But REPL might have something. Yeah, it it should likely work. Um, again, let me know if it doesn't. I don't see a reason why it shouldn't. Um, I noticed that you put import random, which is a which library is that? I can't find it in your GitHub. Um, it's a library built into Python. Um, again, something Joshua will touch on in the next workshop, um, but things like random and JSON um, are within uh, Python. You get them when you install um, any usual Python installation should come with some of these basic um, libraries as well. You just have to import them because um, they're relatively large and most scripts won't use them. So just like you have like print as a function, for example, um, or even just like addition within Python, um, this, these are some things that are built in. Um, other ones we saw like requests, um, Discord and async aren't built in, um, but this is that's an example of a library that is built in and you won't have to um, install it in order to use it. Awesome. If there aren't any more questions, um, actually feel free to continue asking questions, but I might work on um, that code snippet we saw, which was banning images and messages. Um, or that recommendation someone gave as a, as a question earlier, would we be able to do that? Um, no promises on if I can do it in seven minutes. I want to make sure the next presenter has time as well. Um, but I'll see if I can quickly throw something together to show how this might work. Um, I'll um, show you guys how I do that. Jason, I don't know if you yeah. answered the question already. Does Python work the same as Python 3? Yeah, um, I think I answered that uh, <laughs> earlier when we saw it in the chat. Um, it's just the command we use against something Joshua. Yeah, Eric um, saw it answered earlier. Um, I think we're all good. If there's any questions or clarifications there, um, happy to answer that. Okay. Um, this is one of the links in that resources page. Um, I'm going to dive into the API reference for discord.py. So when we get a message, um, is there any way we can tell if it has an image attached? That's my first question. Because then we could probably block it or delete it um, or do something about it. Um, attachments, okay. So what type of, a list of attachments, okay. So if message dot attachments dot length, let's try that, doesn't equal zero. I'll put this in brackets. Um, then we can say message dot, how do we delete a message? Methods delete. So await message delete. Okay, let's give this a shot and see if it works. I need a test image to upload as well. So um, let me download one of these. Let's 
see if my laptop will let me do that. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see the window, but I'm just downloading that image as a test file. Okay, so if I send a message with no attachments, um, no attribute length. Ah, yes, Python. Um, let's then do length like this and see what we get. Um, as, like I said, feel free to ask any other questions. I'm just working on this in the meantime, if anyone has any questions and just to demonstrate that it's pretty quick to build something if you're familiar with Python and familiar with these sorts of tools. Um, so I'm able to send a message, fine. Um, let me attach this image. You guys will see my downloads folder. It's a mess. Um, let me add a comment or something on it and upload that. Delete it itself. Um, so that's one way you can ban photos from a particular channel. I could filter by the channel as well. Um, I'll also say message.channel.send. Um, no images here, please, with a lot of passive aggressive exclamation marks. Um, and then we can try that again and we'll get a message back that um, demonstrates that we should do that. No memes in hash general, yeah. Looks like it. Okay, I don't know. Um, this is a cute dog. Upload. Deleted it. Um, oh, it was never awaited. Um, so this is an asynchronous um, library. So sometimes you might have to await things. That's a, a pretty clear error message if something like that does happen. Um, and if that's your idea to um, like ban memes in a particular channel, um, you can definitely do that. Um, the first challenge I'd focus on is detecting whether something is a meme or not. Um, like I said, you might be able to try something like OpenCV for that. Someone else might have a library out there already. There we go. So it replies and says, no images here, please. Um, so that's, that's a quick example of um, how you can ban an image in a channel if that's something you're interested in doing in your Discord server. Um, on that note, I'll kind of go back to my resources slide, um, and I'll send in the chat right after this workshop. Um, my Discord URL, my Instagram, and my LinkedIn. Um, feel free to connect with me on Instagram and LinkedIn um, for just the sake of networking and connections. And if you're curious to learn more about the things I work on, if that uh, rock climbing and 3D printing stuff is interesting to you as well, uh, feel free to follow me there and I'll try and remember to post things. Yeah, TX people say lol. Um, I don't have a corgi, so there won't be any corgis on my Instagram. Um, but I post some photos of my dog. He's a, a miniature poodle toy poodle mix. So that's another reason to follow me. Um, like I said, I'll also share my Discord. Uh, I'm sure many of you have seen me on there already. So you can find me easily. Doggos, yeah. Um, and you can uh, message me on Discord during the hackathon if you have any questions, especially about Discord bots, um, regardless of what language you're doing. Um, even if you're just thinking about maybe building a Discord bot, I'm happy to sit down and chat with you about what that might look like, how much work that might take, and whether it's feasible. Um, for your idea. Might have to DM you soon then. Perfect. I would love it if you do. Um, these are some resources. I think most of the names are explanatory, frequently asked questions. Um, this installation instructions and Discord bot setup instructions are directly what we did today. Um, the examples are also some that we directly took from. Um, if you Google just Discord bot examples, you get some of the other ones we did today as some of the first results um, and some other next steps you can do. So there's a lot of ways we can clean this up. We can add a profile photo. We can add channels and roles. Um, you can take a look at other bots for inspiration. We do that a lot around here as well. Um, add some of these common features we talked about, connect with an external API, come up with your own unique features. Banning memes in the general channel is a cool feature you can add to your bot. Um, you can consider using bot commands, which was a different way to format it as opposed to events. I'm happy to dive more into that if you want to DM me and we can chat a bit about that. Um, at a web front end, our bot has a settings portal for our, our executive team to set things up and helps make it more accessible to anyone. So you could, if you're someone who has a, a front end experience, you can make a little server for yourself and run uh, some HTML files from it. Um, hosted, like someone mentioned, if you don't want to run it on your computer, you can use something like Python Anywhere or Repl.it to host it. Um, and if you're really curious, Discord has a great blog where they do lots of write-ups on how they actually make a platform of tens of millions of people and billions of messages and accounts and things happening there, um, how you actually build a platform at that amount of scale. Um, so there's some cool articles there if you're someone who's curious about that kind of thing as well. Um, with that, I see, we have, we, I see we're at time. I'll wrap it up. Um, and thank you all very much for, 
for your attention, for listening. I hope I've given you some inspiration to build some Discord bots of your own. Um, and like I said, feel free to reach out if there's anything I can help with. Uh, on that note, I'll pass it back to the TOHacks team.